Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Adam's Eats. Now as you can probably tell by the title, I'm not actually doing a recipe today. Uh, I'm actually doing a product review, which I don't think I've actually done one before of anything, um, apart from naff food that I've tried. So this is the first ever product review on the channel and I think that deserves a round of applause. Well done me. Well done me. Now I should stress, I'm not actually being paid for this. The company did send me the product for free. They reached out to me and I thought, why not? So everything in the review is my own opinion. Um, you know, so if it's good or bad, that's what I think of it. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm not gonna take a load of money just to say something's good uh, when it might not be. Because my integrity is more important than that. You know, you guys want an honest review of a product, that's what I'm gonna give you. A company called Omor, they reached out to me, said, look, we're gonna send you an air fryer, see what you think of it, uh, make a video review, and that's what I've done. Now I've kind of not really thought much about air fryers. I kind of think they're a bit gimmicky. Um, so I've never really kind of thought to buy one myself, but I thought the company's been kind enough to send me one for free, so I might as well review it. So if you wanna know if it's any good at all, keep watching and you'll find out. Right, so here's the air fryer itself, and I think you'll agree, it's pretty massive. I mean, look, this is my head, right? Look at the size of this thing, right? It's huge. Now, I suppose if you've got a large kitchen, it doesn't really matter so much, but mine's quite small, as you know, so this is something I'm not gonna be able to keep out on the counter all the time, because it's just gonna take up too much space. Now, before we kind of get into it and sort of look at the presets and all the settings and what have you, I'm gonna read you some specifications from their manual. Um, I'll read the UK version and the US version. So for the UK version, it's got a rated voltage of 220 to 240 volts. Um, it's also got a 50 to 60 Hertz rated frequency. The rated power is 1800 Watts. The fry basket capacity is 5.5 litres and the net weight of the device itself is 6.13 kilograms. The product size is 421.5 by 343 by 380.7 millimetres. Now, it's the same for the US, the only difference there is the rated voltage is 120 volts and the rated frequency is just 60 hertz. Brilliant, boring stuff. Right, so I'm gonna bring you in a bit closer to this uh, screen here so I can show you all the presets and other fan dangly stuff. Now, when you first turn this on, you're kind of met with these three sort of dots here and then you've got this dial in the middle which controls your temperature and also your time as well. And once you're kind of all ready to go and you've done all your timers and temperature, you just kind of press that button and off you go. Now, what I can say is that it's very, very simple to use. I mean, it's got a bunch of presets on there as well, but in terms of ease of use, it's really, really simple. I thought it was gonna take me ages to learn how to use it, but it just wasn't the case. You know, if you know how to work an oven, you're gonna know how to work this. Uh, so if you just turn the dial, just in any direction, kind of brings up these four buttons here. That's your temperature, you've got your time, you've got your mode button or menu button, and then you've got a stop button here. If you press the M, it's got a bunch of presets, as you can see, um, for cooking things like fries, uh, shrimp or prawns as we call them, even does cake, uh, chicken, steak, fish, and things like that. So it kind of gives you a base to start with, which I think is great. And then obviously you've got the top there, you've got your temperature. Now, because I live in the UK, we're working on centigrade, but if you're buying in the US, obviously that's gonna come in Fahrenheit. And then you've got your time there. Now there is another button just on the right-hand side here, just above, it is all touch screen. Um, is a heat preservation button. So it means that when your food is cooked, it'll just keep it warm for up to two hours. Now in terms of the actual cooking basket itself, it's very simple, it just kind of pulls out like so. I just kind of have to move this to one side of it. So what I mean to see, it's so huge. I'm gonna have to kind of move things about so you can see. So as you can see, this is the actual basket itself. Um, that's where you put your food. And it does lift out. It took me a bit of a while to kind of figure it out, but basically you've got a little slider here. You slide that forward, and then there's a button here which you just press down, and then you can lift the whole thing out. And then obviously that's where all your fat collects. Um, and then also you can take that out to kind of dish up, and it's easy to wash as well. So that's the kind of fry basket itself. It's also got a maximum fill line uh, to sort of say, don't overfill it. Now in terms of build quality, it's nothing really to shout about, it's just plastic. The handle itself has got like a aluminium or metal kind of finish on it. And obviously the basket itself is metal with a non-stick coating. So it's nothing to shout about, but there's nothing negative about it, you know. It is what it is, it's plastic. Now it does also come with a little recipe book just to kind of get you started, I suppose. The only problem I found with it really is that it's kind of like, You've got English diet, you've got Dutch diet, French diet, Spanish diet, and Italian diet. Now, I can't read Spanish, Italian, Dutch, or French. 
Um, so I can only read the recipes for the English section. Well, actually, I'd quite like to learn how to do the Spanish one as well, but I suppose if you do a bit of Google translating, that'll be fine. Now, one thing that did make me laugh is that, as with a lot of things nowadays that require translation into English or another language, is they don't really kind of do a proper job. And there's a lot of broken English in here. Um, to say the least. Nothing is really going to affect how you kind of use the device. It's just quite amusing to read. Um, and likewise as well, they've sort of provided this kind of grid um, to give you a kind of idea on how to cook stuff. And if I bring it in closer, don't know if you can see that, but you'll notice on the grid, uh, you've got little icons here, you know, and then obviously times and temperatures to cook things at, which is great but some of the icons don't match with the actual description. So right at the bottom here, you've got chicken breast. There's a picture of a cupcake, <laughs> all right? And then you've got another one here, hamburger. It's a chicken drumstick. It's not the end of the world, I know, but it's just amusing. Right, so that's the basics of it. I've shown you the touchscreen, the presets, um, showing you the basket inside, the build quality, that sort of thing. But this review wouldn't be complete without cooking something. So what I'm gonna do, so I've got two chicken breasts here, uh, and I'm gonna cook one just normally how I would do in a frying pan, just simply seasoned. And then I'm gonna do the same thing um, with the other one in the air fryer. Just so we've got a bit of a comparison with taste, you know, crispiness, juiciness, that sort of thing. And then I'll give them both a taste, see what the differences are. And then we'll have a rundown of the pros and cons and also my own thoughts on it as well. So let's crack on with it. If you get your face down here and we'll test this thing out. Right, okay, so I've got my chicken breasts here. I'm just gonna uh, take this film off. And all I'm gonna do is season these really simply. I'm just gonna drizzle just a touch of oil and I'm just gonna massage that in. And this is just to help the seasoning stick, really. Okay, I've got a clean hand here. I'm gonna add salt, okay. And then the same with some black pepper as well. So very, very simple. Okay, so they're now ready to go. So I'm gonna get one in the air fryer and then we'll start cooking the other one in the frying pan. Right, so before we put the chicken into the air fryer, we're just gonna preheat it first. And it's very, very simple to do. Uh, if we just turn that dial, um, and you can change your temperature and your timing there. But we're just gonna use one of the presets, um, which is, we're gonna use the chicken one, which is up there. And I'm gonna reduce the time down to three minutes. Okay, that just gives it time to warm up. Once you've got to three minutes, just press the push button and leave it for three minutes. And once it's done its preheating, it does beep at you um, to kind of notify you to put your food in. Okay, and I'm just gonna place my chicken breast in there. And then I'm just gonna pop the chicken into the air fryer. Just kind of slots in. And I'm just gonna take the time down to 15 minutes, because I think 25 is a bit too long for that size chicken breast. And if you wanna change your temperature, obviously that's that side. And once you're ready to go, Again, just press the button like so. So whilst that's cooking in there, we'll crack on and fry up our other chicken breast. Right, okay, so whilst my pan's getting hot, I'm just gonna add just a smidgen of oil. Not too much, because I've already put oil on the chicken. And then we'll put our chicken in, skin side down. Now what I'm gonna do is get this skin nice and crisp, and I'm gonna cook it for about seven minutes each side. Uh, you can also obviously cook this in the oven, depending on your preference. So once they're both cooked, I'm gonna let them rest for a minute, and then we'll give them a taste. Right, so it's been 15 minutes. The air fryer has turned itself off, so this chicken should be done. I'm just gonna open the drawer and just give it a bit of a press. Yeah, feels done to me. I did clean these, by the way. Uh, the other chicken breast needs another minute or so, so I'm just gonna take this one out and I'm gonna pop it onto this chopping board here. So I'm gonna leave that to one side for a minute. I'll finish cooking off the other chicken breast. We'll let them rest for about five minutes and then we'll give them a taste. Right, okay, so they've been resting for about five minutes. Uh, this one here is the one done in the air fryer and this one is just simply pan fried. Now, one thing that is immediately noticeable is that the one that's done in the frying pan has got considerably more color. Now, that's a good thing in my opinion and I think obviously if you're pan frying it, you've got much more control um, how crispy something is, how much colour you put on something. With the air fryer, it kind of does it all for you, so you're a bit limited in that sense. However, you could kind of just bump up the temperature of the air fryer to get more colour. Um, you kind of have to play around with it, I suppose. Um, but I have noticed that the skin on the air fryer one has kind of puffed up a bit, um, which is going to give it more crispiness. 
um, so that can only be a good thing. But of course, the proof is in the pudding, so we're gonna give these a taste. So I'm gonna slice this open. I'm hoping this one's cooked, because um, again, I've not really had any experience with air fryers, um, but hopefully, by pressing it, I can kind of feel it's done. I'm just gonna slice into that. It's still very, very hot. It's cooked all the way through, and it's really juicy, actually. So I'm gonna slice a piece off and see how it tastes. Um, it's still juicy. The skin isn't that crisp, to be honest. So let's try my one. Okay, let's slice into that. I'm hoping it's cooked all the way through. Yep, there it is, really juicy. In fact, it's more juicier than the other one, actually. Mmm, really moist. In fact, it's more juicier than the air fried one. It's a bit crispier than the air fried one as well. But flavor wise, they're about the same. Right, so now I've tasted the chicken, we should probably go and sit down and then I'll tell you my thoughts. Right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of this. Okay, now that we've tested it out, what do I think? I suppose the question is, is it any good? Is it worth buying? Yes and no is the short answer. And that really kind of depends on your personal situation. Um, because really an air fryer is not a fryer at all. It's basically, it's a convection oven, a miniature convection oven, or as we say in the UK, fan assisted. So really, I mean, if you're looking for something that's gonna drastically change the way you cook forever, this is not it. So I'm gonna kind of break this down into who this might be useful for, and who this might be not so useful for. If you have a large family um, and you've already got a convection oven, this isn't for you. I don't think you'll get any use out of it. Now the thing you've got to remember here is you've got to kind of weigh up investment versus reward. This machine is $130 US. Are you going to get enough use out of it to warrant that price? And again, that just kind of depends on your personal circumstances. So who is this really going to benefit? Okay, this is gonna benefit somebody that is living in a small space, like a bed sit, studio flat, um, and perhaps they haven't got an actual oven to use themselves. Um, maybe if they've got a house share, you're a student, you've got a shared kitchen, so you don't really wanna be going downstairs all the time, sharing a kitchen with a bunch of people. You can have one of these and a hot plate in your room, and essentially you've got an oven and a hob. And for people like myself, I live in rented accommodation where my oven is provided for by my landlord, and it's the cheapest, rubbishest thing you could possibly imagine. And if I had it my way, I would have an electric oven and a gas hob. That's, that's the best combination in my opinion, um, and that's how you can get much more heat control. Now, because my oven is gas, it's not very good, and also it's got one shelf, so I can only fit one thing at a time. The beauty of this is that I can kind of cook my joint of beef or whatever in the oven, and I can put my chips and my roasties into the uh, air fryer, you know, to cook alongside with everything else. So in that respect, it's good. Now the type of people that this is probably not gonna benefit as much is gonna be large families uh, and that have already got a convection oven. Because essentially the air fryer doesn't do anything better or worse than a standard convection oven. It does the same thing. Um, and yes, they kind of portray these air fryers as being healthy because you're using less oil, but you can do that in an oven anyway. You know, if you're making roast potatoes, you can just drizzle with a small amount of oil, coat the whole thing, and then just roast them as normal. So it really kind of depends on your personal circumstances, your personal preferences, and weighing up that investment versus reward. Now for this video, obviously we did the chicken breast, but I have cooked potatoes in this before. I did some roast potatoes and I did some fries. Fries, they came out a little bit dry. When you make proper fries, you know, you've got that nice, crisp, slightly moist outer coating and then you've got that fluffy inside. But when I did them in the air fryer, they kind of went a bit too crunchy, um, almost dried out. The same with the roast potatoes. So in a nutshell, is it a good air fryer? Yes, as an air fryer, it does the job. It's simple to use. It can be space saving depending on the situation you use it in. So yeah, you kind of have to look at your own personal situation, figure out if it's beneficial for you, and then you can make a decision based on that. Now, once you've kind of evaluated your situation and you've decided that actually an air fryer would benefit me, go along to the OMORC website, which I'll put in the description below. And OMORC have kindly provided me with a money saving code, gets you $30 off, which I'll put in the description as well. And I'll also put it up on the screen somewhere as well. Now they do ship worldwide, but just remember that 
according to the specifications, they only come in US and UK kind of specs. So if you live somewhere else in the world and you've got different specifications, you may need to buy an adapter or something like that. Right, so that's the review wrapped up. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative. Uh, and I've given you enough information to make your own decision. And if you want to see me do more reviews of stuff, then leave a comment below. I'm not very well experienced in doing reviews, because um, obviously my channel's mostly recipes, but if you guys want to see more of that, I can do it. So thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Now at the end of this, there'll be some links to some other videos once I've stopped rambling on. And if you want to subscribe, there'll be a button for that as well. And remember, I'll put all the information to Omork's website in the description below. And I'll see your beautiful faces next time for more tasty fun and frolics. And bye for now.